Hey guys, so I'm going to carry on reading for my book, part 4, I believe, which I'm reading completely for free. So we left it off with Joseph saying goodbye to his mom, his sister and Grace, and we'll pick it up from there. So Grace broke down in tears. I only ever want to belong to you, she said. I tried my best to calm her. Have faith in our Lord Grace. He will never let this happen to us. We will never be apart. Joseph, please hold me. I don't ever want this night to end. Help me fight the break of dawn. Grace says, bringing me back from my thoughts. I try to put on a brave act, even when all courage is collapsing within me. As I put my arms around Grace, she's trembling. Her sweet scent and warmth fills my heart with comfort. That's hard to describe in words. As if I was asked to imagine what heaven would feel like at this moment, I would have to say holding on to Grace is close enough for me. My mother stands with Sophie next to her and gestures for me to climb the steps up to the steeple where we can spend our last few precious moments together. The state guards and the trucks will rumble into our impoverished town and demand the handing over of firstborn state servants in the morning and we will lose each other forever. Once we reach the steeple, a million stars greet us. The midnight air caresses our bodies with its refreshing cool scent. The whole town lies in front of our eyes like tiny lamps, glowing, peaceful, silence everywhere, all of which is soon to be snatched away from us. There is a wooden bench with some old blankets at the top of the steeple where we sit together, alone, and wrap, our, wrap the blankets around, us, around ourselves to keep us as comfortable and warm as we can. I just want to stay in this safe, serene haven with Grace at my side forever. We remain silent and watch all the distant lamps of light slowly go out as the night passes on. I love you, Joseph. For as long as I can remember, I always have. From my earliest memories, and no matter what fate has in store for us, tomorrow I will always love you until my very last day of life. Grace speaks to me, but her gaze is fixed on the distant town, tiny town lamps. There's always hope, Grace. We must cling on to hope. You know, there has, there has to be a bigger plan as to why we came into each other's lives, why we were born as believing firstborn children, why we have been in love with each other since before either, either of us can remember. There has to be a reason, some higher power at work for all this to happen. I mean, if we get torn apart tomorrow and we'll never see each other again, it, it, would be like, it would be a complete waste of our lives. Please believe in me, Grace. It can't end like this for us. Grace sighs and places her head on my shoulder. I know, but I'm so tired of hurting. Her words trail off and I kiss her forehead. Sleep now, my love. Savor the last precious moments we have remaining with each other. Don't be afraid anymore. After a few moments, Grace has fallen asleep, using my shoulder for her pillow. Although newlywed purest children sleep inside the state, Although, although newly West purest children sleep inside the state in complete bliss and security of their safeguarded future, we remain ever thankful for the little time we can spend with each other. I kiss Grace's hair and am surrounded by her comforting sweet jasmine scent as she sleeps crouched on my chest. I also float away to sleep, temporarily allowing myself some comfort and being next to my wife for possibly the last time. Air raid sirens boom into cold. Air raid sirens boom into the cold early morning air, and we are both jolted awake. Grace is trembling as I hold on to her. Have courage, Grace. Don't give them the pleasure of seeing fear in your eyes. Grace swallows her anxiety and gives me a reassuring nod. This is a state raid. All firstborn believing children present yourselves before the state courthouse immediately. The all too familiar and dreaded call is announced on amplified speakers, a call that has separated every firstborn child from his family for longer than we can remember. A call that is about to separate us from our loved ones and probably each other for the rest of our remain remaining lives. My heart trembles as an aching fear, with an aching fear, and I know Grace must be feeling the same. I know I must not allow my marriage with Grace to become known, otherwise they will seize the opportunity to prolong our pain for as long as possible. And we will all, and we all know the penalty for secret marriage. I just pray nobody from our town gives our secret away. I turn to Grace, trying to prep her courage one last time before we leave. Remember, Grace, we are children of faith. Let us put our trust in God and in each and in each other. If we are, if we are to go down, then let us go down with our dignity. I say to her, and I can see a calm enter her eyes. If there's one thing I know for certain, Grace may not be physically strong as I am, 
but she has always been just as brave, if not more. In fact, I can still remember her telling me not to cry like a girl after being stung by a bee when we were about five years old. She even bought some ointment hidden from her parents and soothed it over my sting. The memory brings a muted smile to my lips. As we head towards town centre, waiting to see what our destiny has in store for us, we climb back down the steeple and see the place is empty inside. Everyone has gone to attend the town square by now. Sophie and Mom will also be there, anxiously waiting for us. We step out into the small alleys leading towards the town and start running together. Latecomers are not favoured by the troop commander, who is a different soldier every year, mostly decorated veterans from the Civil War. Our hands are locked together as we desperately try to hold on to each other until our very last precious moment. Time for some people is a plen time for some people is a plentiful luxury they can enjoy. For us, every second is as precious and invaluable as life itself. We may only we may only be 17 years old, but our hardships make us feel like we've already lived and endured a lifetime's worth. As we near the main street, we can see a crowd of people moving towards the centre of town. I bring my wife's hand to my lips for one last kiss and then let go of her. She looks at me longingly with pain drenched in her eyes. You go on ahead, Grace. We can't go in together. If they see us, we'll be the first ones to be separated for certain. Go. I urge I'll be with you wherever they may take you. So we'll leave it there for now, guys. That's page 10 already done. And um, again, reading it for free. Thank you so much for bearing with me. A couple of things. Um, I played tennis yesterday with one of my best friends and I lost. So never mind. Chin up, move on to the next match. And I hurt my knee as well. So seven seas cod liver oil. That'll take away the pain. And after losing, what else can you do? Retail therapy. I went into my local sports shop and I got myself a brand new carbon fiber racket. Now this, I don't know if you can see, retails for 200 pounds. It was down to 74.99. Um, the store was closing down, so I got it for 60 pounds, which is not a bad deal. It's carbon fiber is weighs less than a feather and it is very very awesomely powerful so hopefully I'll start training again go back and win my match and keep going on so enough talking let's go for a little drive and pick up there's a couple of things I need to pick up a game I've been after for ages so let's just go and pick that up and, and uh, see how we get on with our new PlayStation and try and get that reviewed for you as well anyway guys please you know the drill. Like, subscribe, comment, anything. Uh, even don't like. Still love you guys. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll chat soon.